Yeah, good evening again guys and thanks for joining me again for another video. Just making a short one today if that's okay because I wanted to get to bed a bit early today. A little bit tired. So see how we go. See how how things progress, eh? So hopefully this time I'm gonna have a quick look. It should be in focus this time. A bit hard to see. I think it should be okay this time. Yep. I was a bit of annoying last time. It's been such such good progress that uh, in the end you couldn't see what was going on anyway. So I'm just gonna do the outlining here. I'm gonna paint that hair in black because uh, it's got like this really yellowy pale beige like color there uh, that's around his horns but I don't like that so I'm gonna paint it in black. Let's get some more black on the palette. Yeah, thanks for the kind comments and, and that for the last couple of days. From people replying about the uh, GW history st stories and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's fun telling you guys about that because, you know, it brings back some good memories for me too. And yeah, you know, it's, I miss those days a lot and um, I'm just glad to have reconnected with a couple of people, Joe and Dean from when I worked at the Oxford store. And hopefully, yeah, get to know a few more other guys that uh, were there around that same time and people I knew there. And hopefully get to reconnect with them at, at two at some point, so that'd be cool. Um, now, people have asked about the br this brushes again, and uh, thank you very much for your comments. Um, there's a new subscriber who asked about these these brushes and this is what it looks like up close. I hope you can see it. It's a Sable Neo Pentel. It's a little name tag at the end there. Uh, but Neo Sable, I think the actual, the, the logo is sort of rubbed off after many uses or many, um, many times being washed out in the water. So that it's a Neo Sable is probably a better one actually. Near Sable. So you probably can get them from some kind of eBay or Amazon in your country, but I'd say the postage would be quite expensive. It might be just worth having a look on the Amazon in Japan uh, and seeing how much the postage would be for that for, from you know directly from Japan. I don't know. Um, yeah, so many people have asked me about it now. That I've had to stop, uh, you know, committing to uh, sending brushes to people and that kind of thing because it's just getting too too much, and I'm gonna, um, you know, lose track of where I'm at with with that kind of thing, and then people are gonna get disappointed that um, they haven't got their brushes when I promised I was gonna send them or whatever that kind of thing. Um, me and Angel Angel have done some kind of deal where he's gonna send me some minis in exchange for a couple of brushes and um, you know Dan's won his set through the, the, the competition we had before hopefully we can do that kind of competition again like a little giveaway in a little quiz or question or something like that on the channel so uh, especially now with so many more subscribers maybe we'll get more comments and more feedback those com those kind of competitions which would be quite good uh, but yeah wait till I'm just gonna wait till everything's all settled down and we're back to normal again because you know we, I've still got a whole pile of stuff that I need to send out to people you know from the United States to Australia heap of, heap of stuff to Australia that I've done in trades for different things which reminds me that I have, I may have secured a sealed copy of the fourth edition Chaos box set from a guy in Australia. 
So we're just neg negotiating a price. It's a pretty good price, about $60 Australian, uh, which is like really cheap. It's sealed and everything. Uh, it's got a little bit of damage on the outside of the box. It's like it's been sort of squashed from other stuff being s sat on it, but uh, it'll be, everything looks okay. I can probably just sort of straighten out the box when I get it eventually and uh, just try to repair it that way. But it's only one, on one side, it's not the whole thing, it's just one side that's slightly damaged. So uh, having, having uh, just sold a whole heap of terrain from Infinity, as I'm sort of getting out of that sort of side of that hobby. Um, yeah, sort of freed up a bit of cash so I could, I could buy, buy that. And, um, and also I got a goblin, the Marauder Goblin, Shaman on the giant spider because that'll be for that high elf inverse goblin night goblin um, Scenario in the white dwarves that I want to play at at some point So I've got that and I've got some I think I've got about six uh, Six custom Weapons for the orcs for 40k for my orc army got Six different variants uh, For those custom bolters or custom weapons, whatever they're called so got those. Um, and what else? I think that's all I bought. Oh, and um, Kent, Kent Fury, which I'm, which I, we, we recorded like half of his interview, but we got um, we had some tip, de technical difficulties again on that day, and we got cut off, but. He contacted me about, he said, he sent me a photo and said, oh, is this the game of Epic that you that you play? And it's just like the second, second ed box set. I said, yep, that's the one. He said, oh, well, I've got this really uh, awesome um, gift that I want to send you. I was like, oh, wow, okay, that sounds cool. Sounds was quite intrigued as to what it could be. And I had no idea, he didn't give me any hints. He said, oh, it's really awesome. You know, what, as soon as I find it, um, I'll let you know about it and uh, send you a picture and all that kind of thing. I'll send it to you. And I said, oh, that's, that's sounds brilliant. So I was sort of trying to think what it could be and had no idea. And uh, he sent me a, and I think he said something and I said, and I just said out of the blue, if it's the uh, Chaos Bane Lord Titan, that'd be just brilliant because, you know, I'm sort of chasing... Um, the sort of last bits and pieces for my Chaos Army. I've got a lot of stuff sitting in Australia now at the moment, uh, like the Renegades box set and um, the Demon Engines and uh, two boxes of infantry sitting there. So for like for a future project, because I really, really want to get into Epic because I just absolutely love that game. One of my all time favorite games period um, and someone com commented on on the video today our epic video and um, also said the same thing basically he's going to dig out his old epic stuff and you know get them all out and, and start playing it which is awesome I'm really glad that that video has been so successful um, and talking about successful videos I couldn't believe that me and Justin's first Warhammer well, 5th edition uh, video got to a thousand over a thousand views. I just couldn't believe that. That really spun me out big time. You know, not that it, not that it's like a big race as to who can get the most views or like you know anything like that. It's just that because like my most of my videos average about sixty views, maybe a hundred. You know, if I'm lucky, and that doesn't really mean anything. It's just you know, um, as long as someone's watching it, I'm I'm happy. But. Uh, to, to know that, yeah, this one got like a thousand, over a thousand views. I was like, wow, that's really incredible. Um, and one thing I picked up about that too is that, you know, the other video we did where I had to break up in three parts because I just couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't save it onto my, onto my, um, onto my phone. Like I could, I had to upload the, the video that we took or sections of video I took into the editor, then I've got to edit it, then I've got to save it back onto my hard drive on my phone and then upload it onto YouTube, but it wouldn't allow me to do it because it, it was a, such a huge file that um, 
I wasn't able to do that. And I, I don't know how I got around it, but I got, got somehow, somehow I did it. That's right, I sort of, that's of course, I, I uploaded like the first part, then, then I did the second part, then the third part, and I got around it that way, which will bring me on to another point in a minute. But um, So, but the, the, those videos, I'm just mixing a bit of black into that red, that, that flat red there, just to get like a sort of a darkish red. So I'm just gonna blend that, blend that into the, um, blend it to red here. Um, yeah, so doing the three parts didn't get many views at all. Like the first video we get, a few, get, get quite a few views, like the majority of them, and then the second two, no one would watch them. Uh, even though I'd, you know, I'd uh, linked the reports together. And I don't know why it did that, it's quite strange, but yeah, I thought people would be really, you know, generally interested to see what actually happened <laughs> in the second two parts, but anyhow. So yeah, very excited about that. So that, that sort of tells me, okay, well, people just want to see the battle report in just one video rather than, you know, three different segments kind of thing. Which brought me to the point of uh, the, the, the point I'm going to make now is that my phone can't is not the best you know device for making videos. It just isn't, and I need uh, I, I really do need a video camera, and I don't have a video camera. Um, I can't afford a video camera at the moment, to be honest. And um, David Schooley, you know, contacted me before. And um, you know he, he's asking to help out in some way, and I said, mate, you know, just just um, you know, tell me about the about the channel if you like, and that's that's kind of cool. And I've got a, I've got a Patreon page set up, but you know I, I don't want to really focus on that so much. But it, it's just there, and, and and some people are going to like that, and some people aren't going to like it. It's just you know, it's just a thing that, you know, I thought, oh, I'll set it up and just see how it goes. And if, if I have time, I can do some extra content for it. That's separate from the channel. Um, but as, as, as far as, like, as of now, no one's actually joined it. Because people don't know about it and I don't want to, you know, bang on about it because I don't like channels that keep on going about Patreon, you know, join Patreon, you know, support on Patreon all the time. Like, just annoys the hell out of me. So he said, you know, um, how about you do like a wish list from Amazon and link that into the video. And, you know, perhaps that's, maybe that's a good way for people if they did want to support, um, you know, what I'm doing and maybe, um, you know, help me out with a bit of cash here and there just to get some extra, you know, sort of essential equipment um, to improve the channel. It wouldn't hurt just to put it up there anyway and just see how it goes. So I did that. I did that today when I was at work and I had some time. So, um, so if you do, if you look at probably at the end of the last video, uh, there will be that, uh, that that link there. You can check it out. So basically, I found the the cheapest uh, camcorder I could find that does like 4K. Um, and like a really cheap, it's like $25, um, 128 gigabyte um, uh, what do you call it? A um, memory card and a tripod. And the tripod's like 25 bucks as well. I think it's like pretty cheap. So the cheapest sort of you know kit I could get. I don't know what the quality's like. I have no idea. That camera could be complete rubbish. I have absolutely no idea about all this kind of stuff. So this is all for really new to me too. She might paint those horns in black. No, I don't paint them black. Yeah, I don't paint them black. Paint those horns black too. Um, yeah, because I'll, I'll, you know, I'll definitely need that for our battle reports. Once we start going, getting back into it again, and I plan on getting into it quite, well, as regularly as I possibly can, you know, preferably I like just Justin to come up here once a month if it's at all possible for him to do it, um, so that we can do a video here. It just means that a you know the sound quality will be better, a lot less 
you know, noise and interference from around us, where other gamers are gaming and, and you know, the Japanese guys, I probably mentioned this before, the Japanese guys can get quite, if it's, if it's like the, um, the board game group there that's there on most, uh, most uh, Sundays, they can get quite emotional about things and they, you know, quite, they make quite a lot of noise. Not that that's a bad thing, you know, we make some noise too, but um, not nothing like what they do. And um, yeah, that can be quite, uh, you know, difficult to manage from a video point of view, like trying to, you know, silence that out. So here it's a lot, you know, it's really quiet here. Um, apart from my son, you know, screaming and carrying on downstairs and probably popping in here every now and again to see what Papa's doing. and doing his little overlord thing and uh, seeing what's happening, rolling some dice or whatever. But yeah, and I've got my table, I've got my terrain here and I think it'd be just a, a nice way to um, do a podcast while, while we're here, like we can do it together in the same room for like an episode like once a month together. This is like the plan I think we're gonna, gonna stick with for that. And I'll of course, you know, release more interviews uh, through the through the week as we go. And yeah, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Like, see, you know, how things progress and um, no, I don't know, like, you know. Otherwise, we'll just stick with the camera and see how we go. But yeah, it's the, the, the limiting thing about that will be just the memory. And I would prefer just to have it a camera on a tripod set up in a, in, a, in a corner of the table or just in front of me as Justin's playing his, his turn and I, he'll turn it, I'll turn it around so he's looking at my side when I'm doing my turn. Um, you know, ideally you want two cameras so you've got one sort of pointing to like where the, the dice tray is and you know, as you see in many other videos and you can see all the dice rolls and that kind of stuff. Maybe that's something we can work towards in the future, but I'm just sort of just doing a very light, um, a very light uh, highlight now with some beige and a bit of yellow and a bit of red in there to make that mixture. Just to just define all the muscle um, segments here in his body. But yeah, you know, I'm really, really excited about doing it, making the channel the best it can be. And, you know, for as long as I can do it, uh, things will get easier as like my son gets older and, um, you know, I'll have more time. Like, you know, ideally he can, he can be with me as I'm painting and that kind of stuff and, and get more hobby stuff done. Now it's just too difficult. He's at the age where he, you know, he wants to dominate and take over everything and everything's his and not mine. And, you know, they're just in that sort of time uh, of their development where, you know, they get very possessive about things. So. And I was thinking, you know, it'd be nice to have, you know, just as a family, just to do stuff together, like hobby together. And my wife can do her, her own sort of craft type things and, you know, my son can do some painting and stuff like that. He's sort of keen on taking my paints from out of here when he comes up here and takes a brush and he wants to go downstairs and he can paint in his, in his little uh, little book that he likes painting in. Um, And I was really busy on Messenger today with my Warhammer group here in Tokyo discussing these rules for the Warhammer Renaissance that uh, I interviewed uh, Boulder uh, the other day on my podcast about. And 
it's only been, you know, the last couple of days I've actually had a good look at the rules and that kind of thing. And I tell you what, guys, I'm pretty, pretty keen on playing it. It's ticking a lot of boxes for me. You know, it's not going to replace my love of uh, fourth and fifth, but it, it takes elements of those games and it's, it's taking elements from uh, you know, 6th and 7th edition, which I've never played, but I, I, I can see the characteristics of, or I can see the where the modifications of those those systems have come in and sort of they're, they're in the in the design choices they made in those in those army books or in uh, mainly the army books, I think. And I think you know, I think he said that the weapon system and the, sorry, the weapons have been changed to more um, 6th and 7th edition that kind of thing but slightly modified like it's not that like you know, if you look at the rules it's it's very very uh, lightly modified in areas and places you'd have to really look closely to check uh, and compare what they would be but uh, the biggest thing would be the um, well to start off with the army books and the dwarf army now, as people might know, I'm a huge Dwarf fan, have been since the very beginning. Um, and we all know how slow they are, right? They can only move three, three inches. Well, he's changed it to four, which probably be the biggest thing. To say that you know dwarves being so stout, so strong, you know, uh, okay, they've got short legs, but the heavy armor is not going to weigh them down, so they don't get this encumbrance uh, penalty for wearing the heavy armor, so they can move forward, which is brilliant. Like, that's like wow, awesome change. Um, you know, of course, I would like to do that as like a friendly rule in my games, but I think many people wouldn't have, wouldn't have liked it, or you know. Maybe there would have been a bit of, bit of disagreeing back in the day about doing that, but hey, now it's now it's actually it's part of these rules, so let's try it. Um, so that's one of the biggest ones that I really really liked. Uh, other things were um, now I don't know if this is in the other editions, but because this is all based on the fourth edition books, but your Throne of Power can actually join units and fight with them. Now, uh, in the fourth edition book, as far as I know, you can never do that. It's like a soul uh, operated um, and um, you know, like an individual piece that the king would sit on the throne and then the bearers would just, you know, carry it along and you couldn't charge with it. I don't know, could you? I think you could march move with it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can march move with it, but. I've never used one actually, I've got one half painted, I, I still need to do it, paint it up. But you know, to have that inner unit, especially with hammerers, because the hammerers in this, in this version of it, if the king is in that unit and leading that unit of hammerers, they become unbreakable. Um, so you have to kill them to, the, to a man. And only only like like fear like being outnumbered by fear causing opponent will allow them to, to be broken but um, other than that you know you have to kill every single one of them um, so that was a quite a cool little change um, the anvil works very much like the sixth edition anvil which gave me a little bit of concern because I was not really too keen on this sort of static uh, anvil being positioned on the battlefield and loses the charm of the um, original model and all that kind of thing. But, you know, the more I read about it, the more I liked about it because, okay, it doesn't store magic cards anymore, but the, uh, uh, the runesmith can cast spells like a wizard and he's got three different spells from the three, three different colleges of magic that are like you know, specific spells that he can cast. He, what else can he do? He can cast, he can cast up to three different spells. He's effectively like a wizard, so for example, like the, um, uh, is it the uh, 
Gort's banner. When you know, if you're in base base contact with a wizard, he'll blow their brains out. Well, he's affected by that now, uh, given that he's a wizard. Um, so you gotta watch out for those uh, those cavalry runs in because he can't move anywhere because he's static. So you know, if they charge him with that banner, he's pretty much screwed. Um, he's got some kind of like the the the, the actual. Uh, the runic items have changed slightly too, which I wasn't too keen on seeing because I quite liked them just as they were. Not all of them have changed, just some of them have changed. So uh, to be, you know, it's to be to be modified and suited to the the, the rule set. Maybe some of the terminology's changed, or the names of the runes have changed, or their effects have slightly changed in some cases. Not all of them; some are exactly the same. Uh, but there's one for uh, there's a couple there for the um, like the talismanic, uh, like almost like the arcane uh, ones that the uh, the runesmith can use. There's one room where you can um, you can change. I think you can change the power cards into dispel cards, which is quite a cool one. It's either that or it's the um, changing dispel into power. I can't remember exactly which one it was. Something like that where you can you can influence the um, the, the winds of magic and change them. That was really cool. Um, uh, so apart from that, like the main rules, it has rules for musicians. So if you have a musician in your in your unit, which are now like just ten points flat, like just ten points flat, so standards and um, musicians are just ten points flat, regardless of what what it is. So for cavalry units, it's really good because before it was so prohibitively expensive that. You would never really run a standard or musician in a cavalry unit, but now it's quite affordable. It's only cost you 20 points extra. And that musician will allow you to, at the beginning of your move, uh, pivot in the center of, of the unit. So if you're familiar with the Song of Ice and Fire game, which I have and I really enjoy, um, uh, it's, it works and operates very similar to that. So the unit can pivot in the center <coughs> to turn any direction it likes, and then it can move its normal move and then pivot again. So it's two free pivots, but it can't do it on the march moves. But it, it just makes that it just makes movement so much more freer, and I, I just I just enjoy that. Um, that's not knocking the original rules for Warhammer, but it can you know, especially with dwarves, man, it's just so painful. It's like, you know, why bother? Um, yeah, you might as well just spend all your move and just change formation completely. You know, why bother trying to wheel or anything like that? It's just, you know, it's just impossible. Uh, and it made them so static. But now, hey, the dwarves can move a little bit. They can jiggle a bit and, you know, they can get, um, they can brace themselves for a charge in a better position. They can align themselves uh, better for a charge next turn. Becomes more strategic and tactical that way too. Uh, so yeah, you know, from what I've read so far, I'm really, really liking it. Um, wizards, for example. So you know, you, you know, you always get like random spells dealt to your wizards. And let's say you've got like, a, let's say you've got a first level uh, shaman, right? Yeah. So he only gets drawn one card, and that's it. That you're stuck with it. Uh, in these rules, you get drawn three more cards uh, plus your, sorry, you get drawn three cards plus your level. So in the case of the first level shaman, you get four cards and then you can choose one of those cards and then you discard the other three. Really cool. I quite like that. That means you've got a bit of a chance of getting the cards you want because, um, but I, I do like it in fifth that you know you just get dealt what you what you get and that's it and you just got to do with what what whatever you got and it's just like a draft system it's just the same thing, same principle. It doesn't allow you the choice. It's just you know maximize your choices, take more wizards, and you know you'll you'll cover all the bases. But um, yeah, no, I, I quite like that. Uh, now the, the rules for the total power card are a little bit. I'm not sure, but um, scrolls can 
dispel total power. So if you dispel a scroll, you can dispel it. And I take it if you have the destroy magic, um, uh, destroy magic scroll, then you can dispel it automatically, then roll to see if you destroy the spell that they're casting. Imagine that's how it works. But it wasn't too keen on that. Um, I, I, I quite like the idea of total power just being total power, and it just does what it does. But it says on the card, and it just you know, it stops you from prevent, preventing uh, the spell from going off, and just live with it, live with the consequences. But uh, for whatever reason, you know, uh, he has his uh, well, he has his good reasons, I suppose, and uh, they play tested it. And, uh, people's consensus. I think that's still, you know, the magic's still sort of up in the air. It's not completely finalised, as Belda had said in the interview too. It's still about 90% and it's not 100% yet. And, um, you know, he needs people's feedback too. Uh, that's encouraged, which is good. It's healthy. You know, you need, you, need, you need feedback from the community for ideas that maybe you hadn't come across or um, uh, new perspective on things. And he's looking for you know people in different matters and different gaming cultures to uh, you know, give him that feedback so he can make a reliable and informed um, decision when making changes. Obviously, he doesn't want to change all the time because you know that that'll make it really confusing and, and just um, uh, not not um, not good for anybody. But. But yeah, we're going to play, we've decided to play uh, me and Justin next month with our first game of um, Empire and, and Scape. We're actually going to play the Wine Renaissance rules. We're going to give it a go. We're, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm sort of online always talking about it. So, and I said to Justin first, hey, we'd try this. And he goes, oh, I don't know. You know and then, then he said to me, yeah, okay, let's, let's try it. We're sort of just pestering about it now. So... Uh, that's cool. I'm glad we're doing it. I'm just mixing some more yellow into this mix, guys, and it's getting a bit more yellow. Just going to dry brush over the wings here. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to, especially playing Doors. Even I'm playing Skaven, and I found out that the point, because the points have adjusted slightly on some of the troops. Some of them are fairly similar. Some are a lot cheaper. Some are some more expensive. It just depends what it is. And uh, it, looks, it looks like I've got to paint a lot more Skaven to get to my thousand points now. And I, I can understand his reasoning in doing it because, you know, um, clan rats are sort of the backbone of the army. You've got to have one in, until you, you have to have one, at least one, to include another uh, unit of, for example, plague monks or storm, storm vermin. I think you only have one on the unit of storm vermin anyway. But yeah. To have those units, you've got to have the clan rats. You just can't take. Yeah, you know, my my idea was just to take the storm vermin, and I can't do that now. In those rules, I've got to take clan rats. But that's okay. We'll play by the rules and and uh, you know see how it pans out. It's fifty percent minimum on troops and regiments, and that's really good. I really like that. But that's a, that's an easy rule that you can incorporate into your fifth or fourth edition games anyway. You know, you don't need uh, a rule set to change your. Um, ideas about that or preferences on how many troops you should allow. You can always adjust those percentages however you feel is comfortable for you and your game group. Um, and like I said, it's not going to re replace my love of uh, the older games. And I, I don't think um, even Baldur's designed it because, you know, to do that, to compete with them at all. I think he's just done it so that, you know, he had some time in his hands and he thought, I want to I play Know, a miniatures game again. Uh, this is the best system that, um, you know, or this is the system I love the most. The, the 90s gaming, you know, the gaming era in the 90s, and he's just thought, well, you know, fourth edition was my favorite game, and this is just his version of it. I'm just putting some into the black, some of that, um, how's it, Caspian blue? Yeah, Caspian blue from scale color. It's just a grayish blue. I'm gonna dry brush that over. Um, yeah, so it's been fun today. It's been good. It's been nice to talk to the guys and have a lot of well, just me and 
It's mainly me and John Joe, my John Joe, talking about it. But um, yeah, Jesse, you know, piped in and he said that he's pretty. He pretty much said what I thought about the whole Renaissance thing anyway. When I first saw it, it's like um, I was sort of just standing in from like a, a bystander kind of point of view and just looking at the pretty pictures and not really looking. Just didn't even take in consideration the rules and what he had done with them. I wasn't really all, all that interested in it, to be honest, was because, you know, I thought, no, I'm not playing any other variants. And, and didn't, didn't give it the time of day, didn't even look at the files, didn't look at the rules, nothing. So when I interviewed the guy, I had absolutely no idea what it was all about. So, yeah, that interview really changed my mind and having to, you know, look into the, the, um, the files that he has there on, on that uh, Renaissance site. And yeah, it's um, it's been refreshing, but it's just another alternative you can play. The way I'm looking at it. And, um, yeah, good luck to him. I think he's done well. You know, to do it all by yourself, man, that's a huge project. It's massive. It's a massive amount of work. Uh, I'm just hoping that at some time in the future he can find someone, maybe one of his friends there, or someone in the community that can just you know, take his work, what he's done. And let's be honest, a lot of it is, you know, um, in the words of Rick Priestley, or in the word, in, in, it's worded in, you know, word for word from the fourth edition rulebook. So, um, uh, which is not a bad thing or anything like that. It's just that you know he's not selling it; it's just for his own personal use. Uh, but yeah, maybe someone can compile that, uh, edit it and um, give it some graphic design love and uh, get some nice and you know user created illustrations in there or even just put the you know doesn't really matter you can put like Mark Gibbons's stuff in there or John Blanche's artwork or whatever just to make it the presentation of the book a bit more visually appealing because as I've said you know black and white interface when I, when, I, when I come across a black and white interface of, of a rule book, I'm just like, it just, I just turn cold on it and I'm just not interested in it. Um, but um, because I needed to read the rules and just check it out and get like an informed opinion about it, especially if you're going to play it, um, yeah, it's not, it's not bad to read. It's not, it's not like a word document. It's um, You know, it's palatable like in, in that sense so um, but I mean the army books are just you know this is the list da, 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 um, kind of thing I, I was just going to just make amendments in my own in my own army books in pencil um, just so that I have the like, everything referenced any changes any point changes or rules changes I'll just write those in pencil in my in my own army books so I think all the stats are the same. I think, you know, uh, all the magic items are the same. Like all the characters, they, they haven't changed at all. There's nothing, there's no change. Maybe a slight change in points, like lowering the points. So for example, a Dwarf General costs 160 points. So I think it's an absolutely outrageous amount of money, like points wise, it's just crazy. Uh, they're now 116, uh, much better. Uh, Runesmith's been toned down to points too, which is great because it was like insanely expensive um, before. So they're really good, but they're you know they're really insanely expensive for what they what they do. They don't do that much. You know, then you got you got cost in the Anvil of Doom, which I think is still the same points. I think it's still 100, uh, 200, and the, the Throne of Power is still two hundred points as it was in the book. So that hasn't changed. I'm gonna get some, uh, what's this one? French Mirage Blue. Oh, yes, and the big thing about the, the dwarves, which got me really excited about it, and that's why I was like so excited to play it. Um, they've got the Bugsman Rangers in there. Now these, these editions are from the sixth edition book, I believe. So they've been, I think they're costed out as, they're costed out as 14 points a model, but you can add plus one to get a double-handed weapon as an option. Uh, there's, there's scouts and skirmishes, which is awesome. 
and uh, now of course people who played sixth edition will know oh well you know this is not new this is you know we've done this for ages you know where have you been but well, i've never played those editions so this is new for me and i can get to play it in my edition that i love um, and then i'm just adding some of that um, blue barrage blue into that other mix there just to make it a little lighter so we can just add some nice line work into the horns here um, so yeah, I'm like super super keen to get my ranges to be actual ranges and um, You know to be You know to do what they're supposed to do and have Joseph there. I've never played Joseph. I've painted him I've never played him before ever So I'm so excited to have him leading that unit Out in the front lines You know with his little crossbow yeah, that's going to be an awesome day to see that unfold. So, and I really want to do a Bugman scenario, like to his, to match his backstory. Uh, so the you know the brewery, or was it? It was a it was, yeah, it was a brewery that was um, ambushed by some uh, like a goblin raiding party. I want to play that out as a scenario, and I might actually put that up. So I'll have some time tomorrow in the Hero Hammer group. I'm going to, you know, just post up my ideas about that and present it to the community as for something for them to, uh, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a scenario writer, you know, it's not my field of expertise, it's not my, um, my passion or anything like that, so I'm sure the guys in the community can come up with some really amazing uh, ideas for that. Just adding some of that, um, that really light grey into the mix there. Um, yeah, so I look forward to see what they come up with. Maybe someone's already played it out or someone's already written a scenario for that. Uh, yeah, maybe if we come up with a really nice one, I might ask Dave, my mate Dave, uh, the awesome typesetter, graphic designer, well, like, you know, like as a hobby, who did the logo, if he wants to do some, if he can, if he can, if he's got time. Um, Dave, if you're listening, you know, no pressure, mate, like, it's not, I'm not, um, I'm going to ask you to do it, but if we if we if we have something that we think, wow, that's a really cool scenario. Maybe he wants to just do like an A4 piece of paper, like a uh, like a like a PDF kind of thing, you know, like a nice layout and sort of very reminiscent of the old sort of style uh, fourth edition battle reports. And we can have that in the file section for anybody to download and and um, to use themselves. I think that'd be a great idea. And not only for Bugman, for all different kinds of characters and have like character type backstory missions. Now, of course, I've got, you know, I love Azag, I love the the uh, the amazing artwork, which I think it was a fourth edition or third edition. Um, I don't know who did it now. Huh? But there's some classic bit of artwork where the orcs are attacking um, that. Uh, that Empire City, I forgot the name of it now, it's, I've lost it, but it um, starts with O I think, but yeah, but they, um, let's mix some more of that French Barrage Blue. Yeah. Um, I was going to use that as a dry brush up here in the fur. Yeah, but to play some some kind of scenario with him in it, maybe there's been something out there already that that someone has designed it, or it's been in a white dwarf maybe or something. I'm not sure. But to see that would be quite cool, and to play that out would be awesome. And once Justin's got enough Empire troops, or if Wellington wants to entertain me with his huge, beautifully painted um, Empire army one day, then we can do it. Because I, I did actually to ask him about that, and we should do that. And he said, Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It's just, you know, with the world going to shit now, like it's just it's going to take time before we can get together again and do something like that. He's dead keen to play uh, Man of War, so that's awesome. Um, and I'm just about to order the other three. Um, they're not called Iron Breakers, are they? Ironclads. Ironclads? Uh, the three missing. Uh, ships from my dwarf fleet so I'll have all the 
I'll just have one, one of each type and a, and a, uh, a squadron. It's not a fleet, it's a squadron of those. Um, and I'll get that sent over at some point. And that's a, that's a long way away yet, guys, unfortunately. Because I've got to paint up a Empire fleet. But I might just start with this very small, you know, just for us starting out. Just a really, really small uh, fleet size for both of us. And then we can play out a little sort of demo game as, you know, uh, I, I played 25 odd years ago, only one game, and I don't think well has ever played it before, so. Or should I just do the, um, the starting ships that come in the set? Maybe we should just do that. I've got to paint them anyway, so. That was like six pirate, six pirate ships and six empire ships. They're pretty simple. Um, now, yeah, time-wise, I think we're going to have to say good night soon. But I hope you enjoyed sitting there and chatting with me or listening to me please ask me questions guys okay because I'd love to hear your thoughts based on my thoughts about the one renaissance game maybe you've tried it already maybe you've, maybe you're playing maybe you're actively playing now another thing I was going to bring up as, as a sort of a last last kind of point uh, of discussion is that um, the hero hammer group is mainly comprised of people like myself who enjoy the 90s era of the hobby as a nostalgia uh, group you know they, they love looking at the models they love looking at people's projects but there aren't many people actively playing the game as I've noticed okay maybe that's a, a misrepresentation of the majority of the people but out of 3,500 members that we've got in my post, you know, asking people, you know, who actively play because I wanted them to be on the podcast, not many people responded. So I'm, I'm sort of gathering that as a people, people have joined it so that they can just enjoy looking at the images and that kind of thing and seeing and getting inspired. And you know, people hear, hear stories all the time, and some people are actually getting into the game, which is awesome. You know, I wholeheartedly encourage that because, you know, that's what I'm doing this for. I'm not just going to paint up these miniatures, stick them in the shelf to look, to look nice, even though that's, that's, that's good in itself. I want to play with them. So the more people actively in the, in the hobby actually playing uh, would be, you know, brilliant to see. And actually see battle reports, more battle reports. But what, you know, differentiates that with the renaissance group in my observations anyway is that it is an actual active community so you know people are actually actively playing that game and it's still hero hammer there's there's uh, you know all the heroes in it nothing's toned down nothing's been removed it's not sixth edition even though it does borrow some elements from the from those editions, sixth and seventh, it's still in its essence fourth edition. And you know the, the group is a lot smaller than you know the Hero Hammer or the Middle Hammer group. Middle Hammer is massive. Things are like eight thousand people now. But yeah, it's just an observation that I I I'd made today, and you know thought well you know this this is actually an active community. People are playing games, doing battle reports, and that kind of thing. Um, so it's nice to see you know, that happening. It's nice to see that there's something. So it's 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 evolving and it's it's going to change. And you know, people are going to be more active uh, vocally on there and um, putting ideas and, and um, experiences down and that kind of thing. So in that sense, I'm really excited about that. And uh, you know. Normally I wouldn't wouldn't have given a second look that that particular group, but now I'm sort of thinking, yeah, I actually want to be more part of this and see where this goes, see what kind of you know what what potential it can become. 
it's not going to be a marketable you know, product that you know, he's going to sell. But what it will do is that it will bring together those people like us that have come out from the 90s gaming and give them another alternative to play with their friends. And if they say, hey, you know, this is games, remember the game we played, you know, in fourth edition? Oh, yeah. And all that crazy magic and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of the same game, but it's just, got, it's just been balanced out in a few areas here and there. And it's not so like a spell um, I, I think you know the way he's looked at it is that he doesn't want the spells to dominate and crush uh, opponents or you know have that massive gun line where it just decimates an entire enemy's um, uh, you know forces in, in a single turn you know he, he wants to try to balance those or just iron out the creases on those kind of issues so that you know you can have an enjoyable game over an afternoon uh, playing to a scenario playing to a narrative this comes with 14 scenarios too about 14 different uh, scenarios in that rule book which I've sort of just skimmed over I haven't actually I just I just counted them how they how many of the were because I was quite surprised how many there were there uh, but I'll need to have a look at those in depth tomorrow but yeah overly you know impressed guys you know? Don't worry, this is still <laughs> a very much a hero hammer, and, and you know, you know, I reinstate that again. It's a very much a hero hammer uh, theme game. It's nothing like uh, the older, you know, more cardboard editions, not Ninth Age or anything like that. That was my first concern. It was going to be like Ninth Age, but it's nothing like that. Thing. It's not a competitive game. Um, I think it's just. Uh, it's it's kind of like a mirror of the the fourth edition rules, but with a slight twist to it. And on that note, guys, I'm gonna bid you farewell. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate your company. I really appreciate all the comments. Um, I can't you know encourage that enough. Uh, Giving you feedback. I know there's some people I need to catch up with as well. I need to catch up with Diego about his origin story. Uh, I need to email him about that. Maybe tomorrow. I'll, I'll borrow some time tomorrow uh, for Diego. I really want to hear about how he got into the hobby and that kind of thing. And I can relay that, relay that back to you uh, verbally in the videos. And um, yeah, because I'm interested in about you know people's experiences from different countries, like like Boulder from you know, Denmark, and how he got in the hobby and um, you know how, how what his experience was. Yeah, I want to hear from other people in different countries, like Spain, like uh, Italy, um, like Germany, um, and that that kind of thing. I think that's quite cool and quite interesting. Okay, guys. So yeah, please take care out there and uh, happy happy painting. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the groups in Facebook or uh, hearing from you on the channel. Okay, guys. Take care. Good night. <laughs>